Okay guys, hi. Uh, good morning, uh, good evening, depending on when you're tuning in. Um, it's old Kevy Boy, the king of steam, Kevin from Hats and Guitars, and I'm here for another nice long hat lecture. Um, I'm here basically to take all the knowledge from hat salesmen. I'm a hat salesman for uh, 30 years at uh, one shop, um, and uh, nine years at a shop before that. So, you know, I've lived, breathed, hats, and, uh, you know, I, I know what they're like. I know about the quality. I know about all the secret stuff on the other side of the counter that the consumers don't know about. You know, things like quality, like the real deal. Which hats really perform, which hats don't perform. Which hats just look great, which hats perform great. Um, now, that being said, let's just say this, um, a hat is a hat. If you love your hat, your hat is great, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a uh, $15 hat you bought on the street or on, uh, on Amazon. It doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a $3,000 hat you bought from Optimo, uh, from Kevin in Optimo in Chicago, which is a great, great place, a very reputable place, but expensive, you know? Um, it doesn't matter what you have, if it's your hat and you love it, it keeps the sun off you, it keeps you covered and warm, it's a good hat, okay? Don't get me wrong. Um, I got my Borsalino hats free for 30 years. They came to me free. If I was, uh, you know, just a regular family man without a hat job, I wouldn't buy them because I couldn't afford them. That's, that's just the truth. Um, you know, I have a dozen or two Borsalinos I've given away to people, um, but, the thing is, everybody wants to know what's good. You know, they want to know what is the good stuff, what's the best, what can I wear in rain is probably the, the most, you know, like, uh, what do you think is going to be the most waterproof fedora, things like that. Um, those are my big, big questions. Um, so let, let's just, let's, you know, iron it out now. Let's just get down to brass tacks. What do I think are the best hats? What's the best? Um, all right, you guys know what I wear. You, you see what I wear. 90% um, of the time I'm wearing this hat. Um, I've always had two of these hats and another one too before that. I had three of them. Um, I gave the other two away. Um, I, I have this one um, and that, that's okay for me. I don't really care. Um, one good hat is enough. I had dozens and dozens, I gave them away. One or two really high quality hats can last you a lifetime. There are things you need to do um, in preparation. First of all, things like the pads, like cap and new pads, things to keep sweat from permeating through the hat. That will make your hat last forever, okay? Um, you need to put a pad between here and your forehead so that the sweat perspiration never even touches the hat. Um, I've had this hat for, you know, at least a decade, um, and it doesn't even have a sweatband in it. There's, there's nothing in there. I took the sweatband out, I put a couple of pads in there just to, you know, so I don't, so sweat doesn't permeate through it. But that's me because I like my hat super, super light. I want it to feel almost like a feather, like there's nothing on me. Borsalino is going to be the lightest, the lightest, lightest. Now, it's a very mysterious company. Most of their models are just numbers, and uh, the store owners give them names, um, with a few exceptions. There are a few classic models that they, you know, they offer to everybody, like uh, the Alessandria model, which has a very thin, thin ribbon and thin binding. It looks just like the Stetson Stradliner, uh, Premier Stradliner, big boxy tall crown. It comes open crown. The Alessandria is a hat that uh, Johnny Depp wears that a lot. It, it just think of a Stradaliner um, Premier, but a super, super high, high quality one, you know, that you could roll up and, you know, bulletproof and all that stuff, last forever. It's like that, but you're paying twice the price, you know. And we're looking at, you know, $400, 500 550 things like that. Um, what are the best hats? Vintage hats are the very best. They're the best. Hats, 
that were made long ago are better than hats today. It's just a, it's a thing. People cannot make a hat like uh, a 1940s, you know, hat and possibly make any money off it today. They'd have to sell it for, you know, $1,500 or $2,000, whatever, and nobody wants that. Nobody except a very small, small amount of people. Um, and it would not be an industry if it cost that much. Nobody would wear them except just a few really dedicated hat nerds, you know. And um, the industry would pretty much not be here. Um, so they have to make hats at a price that people can afford them, that, you know, that they will actually buy them. So, um, you know, the, the materials that they used back in the old days, it just, it, they're not around uh, the, the bodies, the raw materials, and if you're going to use them, it costs just so much to have so much beaver, so much thick, you know, the, the thickness of it, it costs a lot. Now, um, anybody who's ever worked with a bespoke hatter, you know, a custom hat maker, will also know this. Um, a good hat maker can buff out a body, sand it down fine enough that, it, that a rabbit body will feel just as soft as beaver, okay? As far as softness, a lot of that is in the finish the way they buff it down. They could just take more and more time to go finer and finer grit, finer, 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 until the thing feels like, you know, the softest piece of beaver ever. That is a thing, it's possible. Um, beaver is really, really good when the piece of beaver is thick and substantial and heavy enough to hold the weight of some water on it, okay? Otherwise, you know, you don't have a hat that will hold its shape and have a nice crispy shape all the time. After the first uh, precip precipitation, it's going to be, you know, you know what, um, dogged. So this is the reason why people go to places like Optimo, Chicago, and they buy these expensive hat bodies that are like the old days and stuff. Um, they're super expensive, and um, that's just the truth of the matter. Some companies are making felt thinner these days than it was back in the old days. It's just... It's just how it is. Um, now, what choices do we have these days? We have lots and lots of good choices. Most of the great hats are rabbit, okay? If you see rabbit, don't think that it's like an intermediate kind of thing. It's not. It's, this, is, this is what hats are made out of. They're blends of different furs. You know, there might be many different grades of rabbit, types of rabbit, you know, fur. There might be wild hair, there might be nutria, there could be uh, a little bit of beaver. There's all kinds of things that they blend, but it's mostly all, all rabbit. And rabbit hats are, are very good. Um, this hat is made out of wild hair and nutria. This is what, um, what Borsellino generally uses for their um, their mixture. They have a you know a secret proprietary mixture and uh, a blend, just like you know Kentucky Fried Chicken or whoever. You know they they don't give out their secrets. Um, nobody does. Um, you know even if we want to know how much beaver is in this, they don't know. The sales reps don't know. People just don't know that. The people who work right there at the factory, putting the fur into the things and getting the bodies made, those are the only few people who know, you know, maybe some executives. But um, hats are rabbit. Good fur felt hats are rabbit. Don't be obsessed with beaver. Be obsessed with finding a brand that you're hearing reliable things about as far as quality and performance. Look at the felt. Don't buy something, if a hat looks like it's already got a bad flange on it, it's not, you know, it doesn't look like it's snapping or the brim looks like it's already wavy or curly, that's bad, that's bad. Um, there are some hats that will curl just from being steamed. Um, that is something that's popped up in the last 10 or 20 years from, custom, from uh, hat companies making their hats thinner and thinner and thinner, um, curling brims. It's been dealt with with a lot of companies. There's a few companies where it's still happening, um, other companies not. Now, what I always say is look for thick felt, thick, thick pieces of felt, um, 
like Celentino has a nice thick, if you look at a raw edge from the side, you can just see the thickness of it. It looks like a big hunk of felt. McGill has some nice thick felts, you know, whether it's got a, a little flaw on it here, it, that stuff doesn't matter if there's a thread out, you know, what matters is that the felt is good and it's reliable and it's not going to start curling and, and you can control the felt. If something goes wrong, you want to be able to put it on a steamer and fix it. You don't want to think that the steam is going to make it worse or a humid day or, or some rain. Now, that said, fedoras are not meant to be rain hats. They are rainproof, just in case, okay? But they're not meant to take, you know, gotta have an umbrella up there, and that's what they're meant for. Um, they can get wet, yes, but they can still lose their shape, okay? So what you need to do with that hat is you gotta have that hat brim off, Okay, look at the brim, make sure it's straight. It's the way you want it to be. Straighten it out. Look at your pinches. Make sure it's not like old cockeyed. Open up, get your pinches the way they should be, just like it was out of the factory or the way you want your hat to dry. Okay, hang it. So in other words, it's floating right now. It will dry exactly like this with the curve in the brim. That curve is what gives you your snap up and down. It's a it's a hinge, it's a breaking point, okay? What happens if you take a wet hat or even, you know, a, a moist hat or whatever, you leave it flat like this, like everybody does, the flange starts just from the weight of the water and the gravity, it starts dipping, dipping, dipping until it's flat. And it's not gonna be flat and stiff like a nice, flat, trendy, you know, Zorro Bolero hat, it's gonna be floppy like an old Woodstock hat that some, you know, derelict hippie is wearing, you know. It doesn't look good. You get the big floppy messed up brim. Um, people just don't like a messed up floppy brim. They want their brim to look the way it should, you know. Um, that is why you hang up your hat, okay? Upside down, just as good. You look how it is, the way you leave it is the way it's gonna dry. Not that confusing, right? It makes a lot of sense when you break it down. Um, this felt I found is my favorite. It's, uh, it's not all Borsellino hats. It's their top tier, uh, series. It will say quality superior, uh, on the, on the lining inside. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Take a look at this other Borsellino. Okay. You take the lining out. gonna say quality superior right there see the very top of the lining it's gonna say quality superior let me see yeah there it is all right it also says Alessandria Alessandria is the town that it was made in it does not mean it's an Alessandria model if you go online you're gonna see countless countless Borsellino Alessandria models None of them are Alessandrias. People mismark them because it just says Alessandria Borsellino in there. That's the town it comes from in Italy, okay? They also have a model called the Alessandria II, despite the fact that every one of their hats says Alessandria in it. Now, if it really is the Borsellino Alessandria model, it's going to say it right here in gold, okay? It's easy to tell an Alessandria has a thin, thin ribbon, not a wide one like this. It's thin like about a pencil that wide. It's exactly like a white uh, silver belly strad liner. It looks like that. Bound edge, thin ribbon, okay? But you're gonna see all these other hats. So, Alessandria, Alessandria this. They're not Alessandrias. There's one model called the Alessandria. It's the one that Johnny Depp wears. It's a famous, famous model. It's been out forever. Whenever you see old movies, you see a row of gangsters and, and like they all have the big wide, you know, bands like that, and one guy has on a white hat with that thin ribbon, it looks like a straddle liner, those are Alessandras. It's a gangster hat because it's made in Italy, it's the most expensive thing, it's like wearing a big gold chain for a rapper, gangster or something, it's the most expensive hat you can buy, and that's why the gangsters wore them, especially because they were Italian, and in Europe they didn't really have Stetsons, they had Borsellinos. You know? So, let's talk about that, yeah, it was made very famous by a movie, 
called Borsalino, where they wore all the hats and stuff, a uh, French movie, a French film, and um, those are considered legendary hats now. Now, I love them. I've been just tossing these hats around and just really just, you know, not taking that good care of them because I always know that they are one just one little step away from being perfect. All I have to do is just give it a steamer. This is a lavender hat that Borsalino made custom for me once. Um, they don't really offer custom hats to people unless you're like, you know, Michael Jackson or whatever, Michael Jordan or something maybe. But um, they did. This once, one year they allowed us to order some custom stuff. I got this one. I also got a burgundy one, which I don't know where the heck that one is. Um, this was supposed to be furry, like a beaver, but uh, I guess they didn't have the body, so they just gave me a flat lavender hat. Um, the color is faded. It was a lot, lot nicer. You see that? Look at that. This hat is about 25 years old. I wore it every single day. This used to be my green hat, this lavender hat. I wore this uh, from 1997 to like... Maybe 2007 or something. I really wore this a lot and uh, way more than this hat actually. And, uh, it's still in good shape, you know, it's really, really in nice shape. Um, now that's more of you guys texting me and uh, thank you guys. Very, very sweet. Um, I gotta say, um, I, I was given a lot of monetary gifts too, which is incredible. I've already earned more than one week's salary. Uh, about a week and a half so far because of the, you guys sending me gifts and um, the biggest gift is your support and the fact that you are following me to my next shop um, that's that's wonderful and I am going to uh, tell you guys where to shop in the meantime um, I would suggest um, checking out Delmonico Hatters and I would also check out Bencraft Hatters in New York City there's a place called Bencraft they carry Borsellino, they carry Celentino, they carry, they carry all the brands that you like, Stetson and everything. They have a lot more stock than JJ Hat Center. Um, they're one of those hat stores that's more on the upswing, not on the duck down. You know, they're, they're going up. And uh, Bencraft has a lot of stuff. They're, I would suggest checking them out. Uh, I know the fellows there, they're very nice, and um, they don't really steam hats for you. But uh, I will be offering that service. You're going to be able to send hats to me, um, to my home or to my P.O. box, and uh, I'll be able to uh, steam your hats, reshape them, work on them, size them. Um, it's going to have to be a tiny fee. The fee is going to be something like just to cover everything, you know, postage and, uh, you know, a little bit of my work. But uh, it's not going to be like a huge fee or anything like that. Um, you know, something like that. 20 bucks, 25 bucks, or something like that. Yeah. And um, we're going to make sure that all of you guys still have access to my steamer. I have a Jiffy steamer here that I got last uh, year when I did the Jiffy steamer promotion. I was going to do another Jiffy um, steamer promotion, but my wife got uh, sick recently. She was diagnosed with uh, something kind of you know, scary. So um, I put that on hold. I was going to do a, you know, a whole bunch of this. So, now um, I have much more free time and I'm probably going to work with Jiffy again. What we're going to do is get you guys discounts on Jiffy steamers and um, so you don't have to pay full price. That way you could steam at home with me, along with me, on the same steamer and um, I'll give you tips, you know, from here. I won't be um, pressed for time, you know, rushing between customers and sneaking videos because I'm not allowed to and all this stuff. I'm going to be doing it slowly, in depth, and then we might even work something out where I could do it live, where I could steam live, do it live, why not, right? Let's do Facebook Live and all that kind of stuff, where I could steam hats and you guys can ask me questions while I'm steaming, you know? Why not? You know? That's really cool, and um, we're going to do that too, and um, we're going to make some cool changes on this channel. We're going to do some uh, field trips, we're going to go visit a couple of the local hat factories, and uh, hat companies and you know interview them and show how they you know make their hats and pack their hats and you know just ask them I think it would be really in interesting um, I'm, I'm hoping I can make a trip over uh, right here in Queens where I live is Capus Headwear you guys know Capus Headwear they make all the boaters 
They make the coconut straws, uh, the amazing Bogart Panamas that you guys like, um, all the caps, the big apples. Capus is known for making classic stuff. They make the classic hats that we wore, you know, back in the days, and they don't change them. They don't make them gimmicky or strange or, or you know, modernized. You want, like, a, an old bucket hat like you wore on the handball courts when you were 12 years old with, like, you know, a toothpick in your mouth and stuff, playing, you know, power ball? We got that hat. Uh, you want the coconut straw that, you know, Sam Snead wore in 1940, they got that, you know. Um, Capus Headwear is a really cool, cool place. It's a New York City hat company, and um, they're very reputable, they're nice people, and um, every single one of them over there are awesome. So I'm going to try to work a little closer with them and, you know, maybe go down there and see what their facility is like and show you guys, you know, they could get a really nice plug. And you guys can, you know, get some really cool, interesting content at the same time. I thought that would be a really neat thing. Uh, I know they're they're just awesome super guys, so I, I hope they wouldn't mind me, you know, taking, uh, you know, 20 minutes and doing a little interview. Um, that said, I am totally free now. So we have 80,000 viewers on this channel, regular viewers. And these are 80,000 people that regularly watch my videos every time. Um, I did the math. The reason is that I have uh, about 14,300 subscribers, but like 80% of my viewers are not, uh, they're not subscribed. So most of you guys tune in, but you're not subscribed to me. So um, you can press subscribe if you want. That's a really good thing because it helps me, um, it helps the channel get more, more, um, more view time. It spreads it around to more people, and uh, I also get paid. I start to get paid a little bit when, you know, right now I'm getting pretty tiny checks, but you know, if it's, the channel builds up, I can actually, you know, work this into a job at some point, and which would be great because I could work from home, um, build up this place, get better lighting, better microphones, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a wonderful uh, viewer out there named Nathaniel, who's a, uh, a graphic artist, and he's working on a nice logo, uh, you know, like a pro logo. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. You are a real gentleman. Everyone else um, who sent all the gifts, the blessings, the prayers, and everything, I can actually talk about it now without crying, uh, like a, a little schoolgirl. and. I felt really weird uh, talking about it, but uh, I'm the type of guy I'm not, uh, it's not easy for me to accept gifts and, you know, things like that. I get, like, really awkward and I get a, a little bit, uh, you know, nervous talking about it and stuff. It's easy for me to buy my son or my wife gifts, but, like, you know, for me to accept a gift is kind of weird. Um, I don't know what that is. That's my stuff. But um, I want to talk more about Borsellino right now, too. Okay, and before I talk about it, let's talk about me. Okay, because guys are asking, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do. I know that I've got 80,000 hat customers who are very, very, very into this channel. Um, so far, I've got about 450 people who said that they are going to follow me. They support me. They're not going to spend another dime in that store. And wherever you go, Kevin, I'm going to go with you. I counted. There are over 400 people who said that. That is a serious customer base. That's a clientele. That's enough to keep a really nice shop moving and, um, you know, and to support a family with. So uh, rather than to just rush into, you know, another hat job in New York City and, you know, make the same salary and have no time for this website, I'm going to think about, um, possibly working for some companies um, as a hat reviewer that they can send me all their hats here and every single hat we're going to review them one by one and I'm going to tell you what I think of them um, honestly you know right now I am not working for one company I'm going to be working for all the hat shops and they'll be able to send me stuff and uh, you know hopefully on a small salary I'll be able to to just promote them as much as they want. As much stuff as they send me, I will send out to you guys. I'll promote it, I'll tell you where to get them, how to buy them, if they're good, what I think of them, and that's it. Um, 
if a hat comes in, it's, you know, it's okay, but it's not amazing. I'm going to say, look, this hat is okay. It's going to get the job done. It's not amazing, but, you know, this is a uh, ba ba ba. The hat's not curling, and, uh, you know, I think it's uh, reliable. I'm not going to tell you every single hat is amazing. That's not, you know, what this channel is about. So I'm putting the word out there. If there are any people there who work at hat shops, I know there are. There are people who work at hat companies around the globe, you know, like McGill and Stetson and uh, Cygnus Hats and all these wonderful companies. Cap is headwear. Um, Salentino, Tonac, Borsellino, everybody. Um, Nick Fouquet, it doesn't matter who you are. Dorfman Pacific. All the companies out there, all the hat shops out there, Ben Craft Hatters, Bernard Hatters on Fifth Avenue in New York. They're pretty neat. They have vintage hats. Um, world hats, city hats. It doesn't matter. Um, Borsellino is a great shop in Brooklyn. They have their own store. Nobody even knows about it. If these guys want to send me hats to review and advertise on this channel, I think it would be better. Um, I can work full time as a YouTuber tell you guys more things that are, you know, that are valuable and, uh, and, and keep more hats in the loop for you. So you don't have to just buy what's on JJ's or this guy's site. You can just see it all. So this is what I'm doing. I'm offering my services out there to anybody who works at a hat company, owns a hat company, anybody who owns a hat shop, anybody who is manufacturing hats. Um, you need a sales rep. You need somebody to uh, to just run all the hats by. I'm going to work on a hat chat show. It's probably going to be me and another person sitting in a chair. We're going to chat. We're going to look at the hats together. I'm um, basing it off a show that I saw online called the That Pedal Show. There's a, a music uh, channel where there's two guys reviewing like guitar pedals and stuff. Um, the two of them will, you know, like you know, play, play a pedal, you know, they'll both pick up their guitar and then they'll talk about it and they'll like, uh, they'll say, oh, what do you think? Oh, well, it sounds very good. You know, that doesn't sound very good to me. And then they'll chat about it and stuff. And, and, and I thought it was a really good format. So I want to work on that kind of thing. We're going to get Hat Chat going. Um, I don't know who it's going to be, whether it's going to be Townsend or, or, or my son, maybe, you know, or somebody else. Um, you know, from my past, possibly, but uh, we could also do this through Zoom. I could just have a little window over there and we could talk to somebody else and hat chat that way. But we're going to talk about hats and I'm going to be here um, offering this service right now. And um, I'd just like to say I'm available. I've opened a, a hat shop for 30 years and closed it um, reliably. Uh, you know, from 9 to 5, every single day since 1994, uh, I've done honest, uh, dedicated work. I stay up late at night answering comments and, uh, you know, customer questions. Uh, I work after you know, hours, too. So, um, yeah, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking to get hired uh, doing this for people. I'm also a very good hat steamer and probably the best hat steamer uh repair reshaper man uh around um as far as western hats there, there are some better guys down south i know that um but as far as this kind of stuff fedoras i'm the best i'm as good as it gets and uh i can humbly say that i'm effing great um i can say that without uh you know being arrogant because i am um so i'm here kevin is free okay Anybody who wants me, you can get me. Now, uh, I'm around, guys, okay? So, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about Borsellino more, okay? And then we'll be to sing a song, right? All right. So, this is what we call quality superior. These hats are very, very different from others. Their strength... It comes from their softness and their high quality felt. It doesn't come from being thick felt like other hats. It's totally different. It's not heavily stiffened. It's not, um, it's not the same. The reason why they don't have to heavily stiffen it is because the quality of the felt is so exquisite and so perfect. It doesn't require a stiffener to control it. Okay, I'm going to repeat that now. 
What that means is basically, for most hats, the science of hat steaming is this. You've got a piece of, of fur. This is rabbit fur. It's, it's just compressed, okay? What they do is they spray a plasticky spray over it. Hat stiffener, okay? That's basically like my hairspray. You put a thin plasticky coat on top, so it's got a... Okay, there's a little like a coating. It's, it's actually like laminated, okay? What you do when you steam a hat is you're taking that little plastic coating, you're melting it for a second so it gets all soft, okay? Then you change the shape. Let's say I want to change this crease while it's cool and soft. You let go and then that plasticky coating starts to stiffen again in the new shape, okay? It's all about that coating controlling the hat. Without that plasticky stiffener kind of holding on to it, the steaming process would not work at all, and your hat would just just collapse like a piece of cloth. It would basically just be like a pillowcase falling over your head. Think about that. Think about a pillowcase on top of your head, the way it falls down. No body, no structure at all, right? That's what this hat would do. Okay, maybe it would be a little bit, you know, it's a little thicker, you know, but it would just be like this kind of a, a droopy thing. It would not be standing up at all. That's what stiffener does. Okay, with these hats, the quality of the felt is so, so high that they don't need to stiffen it so much. There's a very thin proprietary stiffener on there and it does require some. It breaks down very, very slowly. So you can have this hat for years and years. It gets really soft and squishy. All you gotta do is steam it and the steam itself will reconstitute that stiffener and it starts feeling stiff again. You don't have to re-spray re re these things for years, you know. Um, they are different. So that said, let me show you what you can do with, the, with these porcelinos. Okay, basically, this is what I've been doing for the last three, four decades, well not three decades, with porcelinos. You open them up. This is only quality superior, okay? They do have a travel series too. I believe these with the leather sweatbands are even better than their traveling series, okay? They have a travel series which is a little thinner and what they do is they take out the leather sweatband and the lining and they keep it nice and thin and, you know, okay, so the hat's perfect. I've done this literally hundreds of times, okay? Um, I wouldn't mess with it if I thought that there was any risk. You could see there's no wrinkles, there's nothing, okay? It's perfect. That's a testament to the quality of this felt. Um, it's the reason why I wear it and there are other reasons. I feel their styling is second to none. I like the way their bands look. The shape of their crowns, everything, look at the shape, you know, this, it's just perfectly sculpted. Uh, I've tried to keep the original shape on here, it's not perfectly, but it's pretty stock. Um, I love their color selection, where most hat companies will have maybe black, gray, brown, uh, charcoal, gray, tan, navy, maybe sage green. If you're lucky, they'll have something like maybe silver belly, you know, a couple other colors. That's it. We're talking maybe five to seven colors for most hat companies. Borsalino has a book, like just literally books and books of swatches of felts. So like hundreds and hundreds of colors. If you want an orange hat, if you want a green hat, a burgundy one, a pink one, a purple one, there's like five, six colors of, of orange. There's six different lavenders you can choose from then you can choose the bound edge and then they have two different three different width bands and the bands come in a million different colors like sea foam and bright orange and um it's incredible it's a completely custom company not everybody takes advantage of it but we did we picked this hat in three four funky colors this came out in purple in red in um in an aqua blue in green and um, we did it with the bound edge and the black bands and it became a very famous custom hat. But it was custom. We designed it and nobody else had it. Um, most shops don't really go custom with Borsalino. They don't even know that they can. What they do is they just ask, what's your big sellers, you know? And Borsalino will say, well, the Como model or the Classico model, what were the Verdi, you know, these are our big ones. So they order them. 
but you can order anything you want from them. As a hat owner, as a store owner, you can say, I want this hat with a three inch brim with a raw edge. No, let's put a bound edge on it. I want this color band. I want this lavender felt and I want it to be furry. Um, I want to, uh, you know, I want a logo here, a Borsalino logo, or I don't want it. I want this kind of band, two-tone bands, whatever. It's completely custom. It's another type of company. Um, it takes a long time for the hats to arrive, you know, months and months. They go through customs. It's a big deal. They're expensive. Um, you know, just one little stack of Borsal, one box of porcelain, I know it's thousands. Not many companies can afford to sell them because they can't move them. Um, but they are indeed, to me, the best. Um, I'm only a fan, really, of the quality superior stuff, although their other um, series are very, very, very good too. The Rainproof line, um, the Rainproof line is not any more rainproof, but it's their second tier series, which is basically a rollable series with no leather sweatband and no lining. Um, that's a good series. They do other series uh, that are stiffer, the Augusta series, uh, you know, the, there's other things. I'm not going to get into them all, but Quality Superior is their highest. Um, they also do a hat called the Beaver, which comes with a special, you know, hard shell box. It's, uh, you know, like five, six hundred dollars, and it's made out of pure beaver. That's a very, very nice hat. Um, I personally feel that it maxes out when it gets to this quality. Their, their um, Nutria and Wild Hair quality superior is, to me, as good as it gets. The beaver, is it better? It's about the same, but it kind of feels silkier. It feels like more softer and silkier. Um, it's a little more expensive, you know, a hundred or so more, hundred or two, a hundred fifty more, but um, they're all good. Anything that says quality superior on it, to me, is the best and as good as you can get. Um, also, vintage hats. Anything vintage is usually really good quality. The problem is a lot of times they're dirty, they're damaged, you can't get big sizes, they're all small sizes. It's a pain. Not a lot of people want to put a secondhand hat on their head, too. So I get that. But yeah, vintage hats are really good quality. Uh, most of them, you know. There are some JCPenney and Sears hats, too, from the 60s that are like, you know, they're okay. But you're talking about real vintage stuff, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. That stuff is really good. And... Um, even the 70s stuff, there's some really nice, you know, like feather bands and velour finishes, like Kojak used to wear and stuff, the Kojak, uh, the velours and everything. There's great stuff from the 70s. Um, but yeah, that that's about it. I'm going to talk about, you know, what I think is the best. I like felts that, um, that look good on the shelf. If the hat looks like it's got a really good flange, there's just, you know, it looks sharp with good structure. Most likely the hat is going to have a good flange and that it was blocked correctly and breaks nicely. There's no floppiness. Borsalino is not a stiff, snappy hat. It's a very, very soft hat. Um, it's soft. It's light. It's kind of different. You know, you can take these and it's just quite different but somehow they always manage to get back into shape. Um, even when they're lacking body, they just, they do. It's um, the quality of the felt. Um, this is one with a silk finish here. You can take them, you can roll them, and you can put them in your pocket, and, and they're okay. Um, the only thing is, you don't want to do that usually while they're wet. I don't believe in rolling a wet hat, okay? If a hat is wet, you hang it up with the brim up, put it in its exact shape, you know, you know all that. But yeah, these roll, you can stick them in your pocket when you go out to dinner, you go to the movies or something, which is amazing. Um, and you can see it works. I've been doing this one for years. All right, that's about it. Um, let's, uh, let's end this with a little song, I think. Uh, well, I stood stone like at midnight, suspended in my masquerade. I combed my hair till it was just right, and commanded every night brigade. I 
was open to pain and I crossed by the rain and I walked on a crooked crutch. I strolled all alone through a fallout zone and came out with my soul on a touch. I hid in the cloud and laughed over the crowd, but when they said sit down, I stood up. Said wing to wing, I had a jukebox graduate for the first mate. She couldn't sail, but she sure could sing. I pushed people to two and found out with the blues, with the gear stayed stubborn on standing. I broke all the rules for my old high school. Never once gave a thought to landing. I hid in the cloud and walked over the crowd, but when they said come down, I threw up. Oh, good enough. I took month long vacations in the stratosphere, and you know it's really hard to hold your breath. I swear I lost everything I ever loved or feared I was a cosmic kid in a full cosmic dress Well my feet, they finally took root in the earth But I got me a last little place in the stars And I swear I found the key to the universe In the engine of an old parked car I hid in the mud of a breast of the crowd But when they said pull down, I pulled up Oh, 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 oh,